on Facebook. It's Monday and we are heading into week five of being shut down because of this pandemic. And I know we all had an Easter. It was probably the first Easter that we've ever had where we've actually had to live stream with folks, with friends to be able to have that experience of contact with people. And I know that a lot of you, I've been getting great emails from some of you folks supporting the arts. I wanna, again, thank you so much for reaching out, being here, sharing this stream with people. I think it's just really in a very important time for us to keep our energy levels up. I know that um, for me personally, I've kind of ridden the wave of anxiety, a little depression, um, just, feeling some days completely out of sorts, just not motivated to want to do a whole lot. And I think that's really normal. So if any of you are experiencing that, you're not alone. We're all feeling a little bit out of sorts, but we're going to get through this. We may have another month. So, you know, hold on to your seat belts. Uh, the ride is going to continue for a little bit longer. But I think ultimately when we come out of this, we're going to have such a greater appreciation for the people around us and especially for those folks that are continuing to create and bringing love and light into our lives. And today we have an incredible show. We've got a musician that has really touched so many people throughout the world. He's traveled all over Europe. Um, he is a San Diegan based here, but originally he's uh, from Columbus, Ohio, and his name is Robert Dove. He's gonna bless us today with his talent so we're gonna bring him on. And then we have a glass artist. You can see some of the glass behind me. I'll turn this one for you. And this is glass art by Tom Morose. Tom is one of probably our most popular artists here in the gallery. And we're gonna get him to come on and show us a little bit about how he creates what he does. But I'm gonna see if I can bring Robert on, liven things up, bring this Monday into the right beat for the week. And uh, let's see if we can get Robert. Okay. There you are. Welcome to the show, Robert, and thanks so much for being here. Good to be here. Thanks for having me on board. I can hear you. I know that you, when we had done a little test earlier, you said that the sax is a little loud, so you may have to speak up a little bit so the folks can hear well, I you. Can also, I can also come into the mic a little bit more too. That Perfect. That That's well. great. So, so cool. tell us a little bit about your experience during this time. And, and I, I'm sure you've had a lot of gigs that have been canceled and, you know, what has it been yeah. like for you? Um, it's, it's been a little bit of good and bad. Um, one of the things as a musician is we also look to try to get as much time to practice as possible. Um, right. And with this five weeks of basically inside of our walls, it's given us ample time to practice and work on our craft. So for that, I'm very thankful for it. But in regards to um, as a working musician, um, I think the last time I actually was just had a conversation with a bunch of my friends about this. Um, I think the last time we actually had an event that we played was March 11th. Um, so basically, as soon as everything started kicking off in regards to the quarantine and the stay at home orders, um, all of our events were getting shut down. Um, and as of right now, talking with other musicians um, all across the country, we're probably looking, I mean, not really getting back to a quote unquote normal. Because um, as, a, as a person, I refuse to think of this as a new normal. This is just a pause. Um, and right. we're getting an opportunity to really just kind of take a step back and see what's, what's really important for each and every one of us um, in our lives and, and how we go about our days, which there's been some definite changes for how I'm able to do things. Um, but it's also forcing us to be a little bit more creative with how we manage and do things um, ourselves. So, uh, but in regards to obviously live shows are non-existent. Um, we've had weddings. Did you have shows planned then? Were you, oh, were, yeah. did you have a, I mean, you do this for a living. So uh -huh. give us an idea of, of what kind of a, you know, impact this has had on you. So to give you an idea, uh, the average musician here in town, we book out anywhere between three to eight months in advance. Okay. Um, so we have events that we've had on the books for, I mean, I've had some that got canceled that have been on the books for almost a year now. Oh, wow. Um, and a couple that I was really looking forward to. 
Um, but like we've had weddings, we've had corporate events, both in and out of state that have all been canceled. Um, flyaway gigs with uh, large jazz orchestras got canceled. Um, it's just a matter of it's a matter of safety. And, and like I said, this is a pause for us. So we understand that it's not going to be a permanent fixture. Um, right. It's just a matter. We just kind of have to ride the storm as we have it. So everybody's pretty positive about the situation, but it's also really important. Um, what most people don't think about as musicians is that it takes a lot of physical work to do what we do. Um, and a little bit of insight on that before we had the full stay at home orders. Um, I was fortunate enough to get a couple of my, my good friends, um, over to the apartment, um, to just kind of play a live show just to have it. And we went through so many balance checks on what we should do, what we shouldn't do. And if anything, we called it a, as a, what we call a green light, red light situation. And we said, if there's any red light from any of the four of us, we weren't going to do it. And thankfully all of us were, were good to go. Um, so we were able to play like an hour on a Facebook live stream together just to kind of play. And that was the first time we'd played together in almost a week and a half. Um, That's amazing. Like, and you got right under the wire on that. Uh huh. And, and we understood that. And we kind of realized once we were done, we're like, this is probably gonna be the last time we're going to play together for a while. Um, and what was interesting is most of us are used to playing two, three, four hour gigs every night. So in regards to that stamina, when we got done playing that Facebook live show, we had only played 52 minutes and we were all fried. So you have to think about the physical aspect of it as well. Um, so when we talk about musicians having to practice, it's not just a matter of keeping the skills, the, the dexterity sharp in my case on saxophone, but also all of the physical aspects that go with it too. Sure. You have to basically simulate you're playing a gig with that type of energy. Um, so it's going to be an interesting transition to go from this practice mode into performance mode again. Um, so that's something that you really have to keep an eye on. Well, and also the feedback from the crowd, you know, I know that like artists, you know, artists paint or they sculpt and then, you know, they, th there's this big buildup for the show and then they get that source of energy and inspiration a lot of times from the people who respond to it and even more so as musicians. So I'm sure it's been different being in your own house with no, no response. Yeah, well, there's there's a phrase that I always have. I, I host a weekly jam session at Blind Lady Ale House here in Normal Heights, which is also, thankfully, the neighborhood that I live in. So it's kind of a nice little commute when we were doing it. Um, but the thing that I always say before the show is, um, usually we have four guys in the band, and we call that a quartet in the jazz world. And I said, if you notice, um, there's, there's five musicians in this room tonight. But if you notice, there's only four of us on stage. You, the audience, are the fifth member. The more energy you give us, the more we can give you. Um, I and I that. think that's been kind of a really challenging portion of how to play, um, not necessarily with that energy. And so you actually have to create the energy yourself, which is a different exercise. Um, but there's a couple of really cool creative projects that are coming out. Um, my good friend Chaz Cabrera um, has actually asked me to be a part of what's called the San Diego Online Digital Big Band. Um, and we have... I think it's 18 musicians over the next three or four tunes that we're going to be doing. And every person is actually recording their part at home. So the array that you're seeing in my place, so you'll feel, I actually have a second mic up here. Um, that's actually my recording rig. Um, so when they give me the part, I actually have to play the part individually here. And then they actually put all of them together. So we're actually getting 20 guys, to, 20, 20 musicians to work together. And it's like Matt Hall, Jeannie Geiger, Chas Cabrera. I mean, it's, it's a lot of so cool. really, really good musicians here in San Diego. And so we're trying to find some creative ways to do it. Um, that is, really that's, have... that's wonderful. And, you know, the people who benefit are us folks where we're stuck at home and we need to have that inspiration. We need to be pulling that into our lives. So thank you so much for, you know, taking the time to collaborate with other musicians and bring this so that we can be the benefactors of it. That's awesome. Yeah, it's, really, it's really great. Together. The other, th the other thing too that's really fun is um, a, a lot of us are dusting off old recordings that we haven't really released yet. And so, um, as of this morning, a good friend of mine, Matt Smith, who's a drummer up in Long Beach, he and I actually did an entire duo session together, um, and we're actually working on getting it finalized to actually come out with a new record. Uh, because of that's it. great. It was actually recorded. I think it was recorded almost three years ago now. So it's kind of fun for us to go back into our files and go, ooh, we can bring this one back. Yes. We can bring this one back. So, so it's kind that, of fun to do that. That's great. And it was, really, it was really cool to discover some of those projects as well. So 
We're That's wonderful. Well, I again, I just appreciate your your heart for um, your music, but also for the arts and just for inspiring people. It's really needed and I can't thank you enough. I'm going to minimize my screen so we can give you the stage and hear what you're going to bring to us today. Okay, beautiful. Thank you. So, well, first off, hello, everybody. Um, really happy to be here. So I picked up a couple of tunes. Um, now, if you notice, uh, there's no other musicians in this house. Um, I live by myself. So um, I actually have an assistance of a couple of uh, backtracks that I was able to, to, to create and build on. Um, so I actually picked four songs for us. We can do four, we can do three, we can do two. Depends on what we've got. Um, so I'm actually going to start with a tune that was written. Um, there it is. Uh, that was written by the great Herbie Hancock. Um, he actually just celebrated his 80th birthday yesterday, if I remember correctly. So happy birthday to him. He's 80. Um, and we're actually going to do a tune that was written by him that was entitled Dolphin Dance. Uh, hope you enjoy. Hopefully the levels are all working out. So we'll see how this goes. All right. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you. 
Wow. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. Boy, that just really sets the tone for the week so far. Unbelievable. Really just incredible. I felt like I was front row seats at the blue note there. <laughs> ah, thank you. I appreciate that. One really, day, really one day nice. we'll be able to do that. Yes, so. absolutely. You want to give us one more? Yeah, I can definitely do that. Um, let's see here. Oh, I got the perfect one. Okay. All right. Cool. So we're actually going to do another one by another famous saxophone player. We're going to slow it down a little bit for you. Um, this is actually one of my favorite tunes, and it's it's one that we actually regularly play at the session, but we always forget to play it until the very end because somebody calls us to and go, and we say, that's a really good idea. We should play that one. So we're going to do it this way as well. So we're going to play a tune that was written by the great Sonny Rollins. This is entitled Doxy. Okay. Actually, before we do anything, all the levels are okay. All the sounds great. Are Everything perfect. sounds fa fabulous. Perfect. All right. Just making sure. All right. Thank you. 
Seriously, that is incredible. I just needed my martini. That was the only thing that was missing. Unbelievable. There, there, it is. <laughs> there it is. That a martini or a beer or a gin gimlet or any of it. It all works out. Oh so, my gosh. Beautiful. I felt like I was transported to the nightclub, you know, and just the way that you play, it just so soothing to the soul. It's, I appreciate it, that. You're so talented. Well, for a nightclub, it's a little too bright in here, but we can make that work. Yeah, likewise so. <laughs> here. But you know what? I closed my eyes and I was transported. And that's the thing about, you know, your music is that you just, you feel like you're on a magic carpet ride going to someone, some place that obviously we can't be transported to, but in our minds, but you really, really brought us there. Appreciate it. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you Thank so you. much for being on the show and now, when is your um, live streaming concert going to be so the folks can tune in? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I'm targeting Saturdays. I'm trying to keep that Saturday night or Saturdays, Thursdays. It's, see, all the days are blending together now. <laughs> exactly. um, Thursday Thursday nights, um, because that is actually the same night that we usually do our Blind Lady Alehouse session. Um, and it was kind of a bummer because as soon as the quarantine stuff hit, that was actually our one year anniversary. Uh, so yeah. it was a little bit of a... So the goal is, is once we come back... We're going to have our own one year restart. So we're going to have a fun time with that as well. So, but yeah, Excellent. so hopefully we're going to look at Thursday nights. Um, I'm thinking about five o'clock Pacific or yeah, five o'clock Pacific, eight o'clock Eastern. Okay. So we'll be doing some stuff like that. Yep. That's perfect. So how do folks tune in? Do, do you have a page that they can go to? Yeah. Um, actually, you just have to friend request me on Facebook, my own okay. personal page. It just makes life a little bit easier. Um, so okay. just look me up under Robert Dove. Um, pretty straightforward. You'll probably see somebody with a saxophone. That would be me. Great. Um, and then the other thing too, is I actually do have a record that is actually out now. Okay. Um, and if you do want to go to my website, which I think is actually on the scroll or on the bottom, yes, it is. Um, you can actually, you can actually purchase it directly from me and I will actually ship you the CD copy as well. Uh, that, so if you're interested that in doing that, fantastic. And that's a way, th and that's a way to help support the other artists that are happening on that too. So. We're definitely really doing that. that. I'm definitely doing that. Folks out there, let's support these artists. Let's keep art alive. And, you know, we've all we've all been hit by this. But um, if you can do it, get online and order one of those. I think it's a great we, thing. And thank you for, that. you know, thank you for taking the time out today and blessing us with your talent. Um, it means a lot. It means a lot more than I think probably you even know, stream live streaming, um, because it is live and it is your energy. Even if it's coming through remotely, we can feel mm -hmm. that energy coming from you. So thank you again. Really appreciate, I appreciate it. that. And thank you for having me on. And, and I'm looking forward to seeing the rest of the show as we, as we hang out. So okay. thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Was that a treat or what? Wow. This is such a great way to start the week. And I don't know about you folks, but, and I see the streams coming through, everybody was really blown away by that artist and bringing that music into our lives and into our homes. And music is one of those most powerful things. Um, you know, I'm surrounded by it because my boyfriend is a musician and an artist. So I'm really fortunate to have that in my life almost every single day. Of course, the art's always been there. But, um, you know, it's been kind of one of the first times I've experienced music on a daily basis, which I've come to have even a greater appreciation for it. So kudos to these musicians that are out there 
you know, they're continuing to keep uh, music alive. And with that, we have an artist here, Tom Morose, who has been doing glass for many, many years. He comes originally from a construction background, and then he shifted from that first profession into his second profession, which is really profound, you know, and you're going to hear from him how that happened. But um, we're going to try to get him in here so he can show us how he does this in his studio. You can see some of his works in the back. I'll have him give us a little bit of background on those. So let's see if we can get Tom here in our stream. And there he is. Can you hear us, Tom? Uh-oh, we can't hear you, Tom. Can't hear you. We might have to get Tom to go out and come back in. I'm not hearing any audio. We see you, but we can't hear you. And this is not the first time we've done this, have we, folks? This has been kind of an ongoing um, issue with um, this live streaming format. But let's see if maybe he can he can pick it up. We still can't hear you, Tom. Can you share your microphone? Can you hear me? Well, let me see if maybe he can go back out. Why don't I have you go out and then we'll have you come back in and we'll see if we can um, get, get audio. Because I think the folks can see you. Let me see, can somebody maybe respond if you're uh, seeing Tom in the screen, but like me, you can't hear him? Let me see if I can have him come out here. Let me see if he can come back in. We'll try one more time. In the meantime, I'll share a little bit about his work since it's behind me. And um, it's pretty awesome. I'll see if you guys can see this. This is an absolutely amazing piece here. And um, hopefully you can see it. So this is a piece that if you got up close to it, some of you folks have seen the, his artwork in the past. But what it is, is it's a fractured optic crystal that he's using. It's many, many layers inside. And so what happens is with his technique, and I'm hoping we can get him back on, we're seeing him, but we're just not, we're not hearing him. Let me try it one more time. Now I can hear you, great. Okay, the eagle Perfect. has landed. Hi, Tom, how Need are it. you? I'm good, how are you? I'm really, really great. And I'm even better now that we're, we've got you on the show. It's wonderful. Yep. It, it took a little bit, but we're here. <laughs> well, you know, you're not the first one. Uh, we've experienced this quite a bit because we're live streaming. And as you know, there's a lot of people on the internet these days because um, it's kind of our window to the world in real time. But welcome to the show, Tom. Um, you know, I'm so excited that you're able to come on and, you know, what has it been like as an artist? You know, that's always my first question. What's been going on with you now that you're confined? Well, the confinement for me is really kind of like going to work. <laughs> so since I pretty much work by myself uh, and everything is done in even though I have a relatively large studio, it's just, I can only do one thing at a time and I don't have a whole bunch of employees. I have one part-time employee and that's about it. Uh, so everything I do is just what I'm doing. So what this has allowed me to do uh, is be able to spend literally more time in the shop simply because I'm not out doing all those other things that we all normally do. Uh, so uh, I've been able to uh, actually start producing some new pieces, uh, which is great. It's, uh, it's something that uh, is difficult to do as an artist simply because you wind up spending a lot of time dealing with all the things that come with being an artist as far as selling. If right. you want to be a successful artist and you want to actually make money at it, you also have to run a business. Right. And that business takes virtually half of your time. Uh, 
So now, effectively, I don't really have to run the business because there kind of is no business, right? <laughs> so. Yeah, we know a little bit about that because we're one of the galleries that represents your work. What about shows? Were your shows canceled? Uh, yeah, we. It, it just so happens that just about when this hit, was pretty much the end of the shows on the East Coast. And so we had one more show that we were going to do, and that got canceled. So uh, literally up until November, there are no other shows that I normally do. So hopefully the November show, which is a really big glass show in Chicago, hopefully that one will be back and, okay. and we'll be there um, this November. But we'll see. You never can tell. Right. Well, I, I love your positive spin on it. I mean, I think that, you know, the fact that you're looking at it, that, okay, you know, I have more time, I can be even more creative and come up with some new things. So share a little sure. bit about what, what, can we get a sneak preview there? Sure. Yeah. I'm going to flip the camera around and, uh, and then I'll kind of show you some stuff and, and explain sort of what's okay. going on. And I'll give you more so in here. Yeah, so to start with, this is actually what you're seeing is the assembly area. This is where I put those cubes together and everything. And you can kind of see a few of them. And so this particular piece, uh, this is part of a piece, a brand new piece that I'm doing that is going to be combined with, and let me grab this piece and bring it over here. Uh, show you kind of what it's going to look like. So I don't know whether you can see it, but this piece is going to be mounted above that piece. Yeah, we can see it. If you stop for a minute, we get a better picture because it gets a little pixelated if you move the camera. But if you just stop for a second, then we, oh, wow. Yeah, look at that. That's the top. And then the bottom will be that. And then I can actually show you also what the side, the part that's going to hold it all together. Uh, let me come back and grab this and run this up there. Those are pretty heavy. Yeah, they are. This piece is probably going to weigh uh, between 50 and 60 pounds when it's done. Yeah, I, I don't know if folks have come into the gallery who have seen these, they're, you know, they're breathtaking. People, it stops everybody in the tracks and, and they're all solid. And, it, and you're using an optic crystal. Did I say that correctly? Yes, exactly. So this is, uh, this is the piece that uh, you can see the kind of the large purplish piece behind. Uh, that's the piece that will support the other two pieces so literally up here is where that other piece is going to be mounted. So it'll be about that high. So it's about, it's about 26, 27 inches tall. will weigh 50 or 60 pounds or so. And there's a whole bunch of time and effort involved in, uh, in making that kind of thing. So can you share a little bit, you know, when you look at these, when you come into a gallery, ours or other people's galleries, you know, on first gloss, it, it's hard to really, you see the fractures in the crystal. And I know that's something you do purposely. How do you really, um, what, what is the technique behind that? I mean, I know it's part of it's a secret, but help people understand what you're actually doing to get that light to reflect the way it does. Sure. So the cubes themselves, like, like both of these, this the one that is spinning here is a uh, is a big eight inch cube, and then a small one behind it. Uh, they're all made in the same fashion, and what is done is a rather large hunk of optic crystal. In this case, in this case, clear is cut into a cube, approximately eight by eight inches, and then that cube is ground and polished. And after it's ground and polished, then I shatter it and I use a proprietary heat process, which is actually relatively simple. You heat it up and then you cool it off a little bit too fast and it starts to crack. And then you put it back in the oven and you let it anneal down 
Uh, and at that point, the piece now has all the fractures, but yet doesn't want to fall apart. And then I glue uh, dichroic glass usually onto three sides. And you can kind of see from down here the color that's at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And that's the dichroic glass. It's glued to the bottom of the cube. And, uh, and then uh, build the base. And there we go. How so, do you make it so flawless, though? You don't see anything except it, for just this beautiful, you know, glass piece. I don't see any seams or anything. Yeah, it's um, uh, the, the attempt is always to make everything, especially with glass, because it's easy to see the defects. Um, the attempt is to try and make it perfect every time. And the reality is out of 25 plus years of making glass, I'm not sure that I've ever actually made one piece that doesn't have a defect in it somewhere. The trick is literally just a matter of, is the defect so small that nobody else is ever going to see? It? And that's normally the case. So it's, it, it does take substantially more time and effort to make them as flawless as you can, but that's, that's what we're trying to do. And, and there is a, there is a, I suppose I could call it an unfortunate situation, but it's not that unfortunate. It's that uh, from a business standpoint, you can really only spend so much time on a project before it's no longer worth it dollar wise to do the project. Right. So, so picking which project you're going to do, understanding how much work may be involved in it, and then understanding hopefully how much that that piece will actually sell for is a pretty important thing for an artist who intends to do it as a living needs to do. If you can't do that, you are probably going to wind up losing money uh, because you'll spend a lot of time and effort doing something and not get paid very much for it. So, well, and I think you bring up something that's really um, very important when you look at the arts. I've always said arts, the art is always a historical document. You know, what you're doing here today, when we're no longer here, we'll, we'll look back at and we'll, we'll judge what was happening in history. And the thing that's interesting about this is that when you look at art, for instance, cloisonne from Japan, or you look at certain artifacts that were created that today have will never be created again. It hasn't been passed on because of what you're saying. The kids right. don't want to do it because they can't make a living that, right. you know, they're able to actually take how, however long those cloisonne pieces would take, you know, they take yep. a year to create one piece. Right. And so nobody can make a living and support themselves if they're working on one piece that wouldn't command enough money just to support them. Right. Exactly. So I really appreciate you sharing that because let's hope that you're able to pass this on to somebody at some point. So I hope so. I mean, I, one of the things that I feel is my one of my responsibilities is to make sure that my shop is available to, uh, to artists or for that matter, people who think they may want to be artists uh, to be able to try it and, see whether this is something that appeals to them. And part of, uh, part of that concept is dealing is my dealing with other artists and to try and get you know them hopefully interested or stimulated about something new and different that I know how to do. And then vice versa, I wind up getting inspired by some of the things that they do. And, and a classic example of that is right here. And I'm sure you recognize this. <laughs> this is I Joe. Do. And so Joe and I have been talking lately, and this is one of the things that, uh, that we decided to do is take one of, his, um, one of his turtles and coat it in the dichroic chamber. Uh, so it has, a, it has a definite different look than the normal turtles that he does. So we may be doing this as some sort of a series or something. So I love that. That's great. And I love then the, the, another, the finish on it. Another one from Joe is this is a wax of a of a shark coming out of the water, and we're going to look at casting that in glass also. 
So I'll look at more stuff, the more interesting stuff. Beautiful. Um, and so, so getting back to that, to that uh, inspiring other people, I, I o- open the shop so that if somebody wants to try and experience art, they have the ability to do that. And if it's someone that is especially wants to get into doing glass work, I'm completely okay with them coming here. I'll try and give them whatever help I can or advice as to what you should or should not do as a glass artist and, and where the pitfalls are. And hopefully that can bring some other people who may not be in the position uh, that I'm lucky to be in um, and they can actually potentially make a living as an artist. And that would be great as far as I'm concerned. I love that. I love that you're willing to give back and to encourage, especially this younger generation that unfortunately art's been pulled out of the schools a lot of times. And that creativity is not fostered the way that it was when we were, you know, kids, at least we had some, some form of art. Um, I wanted to talk about these because this is probably along with your cubes, but this style, this wing series that you have created, it's, I've never seen any artist even come remotely close to this design. And everybody that comes into the gallery, they look at it, they try to figure out how that's done. It looks really, really difficult. Can you share the inspiration and a little bit about how you create these? Sure, absolutely. So in the meantime, I'm walking upstairs to where we have there's a combination of things that we have up here. Uh, one is we have this space that we use for um, for photographing. So it's a little photo booth set up and it's, it's on a turntable right now. So you can see that piece turning. Mm-hmm. And so, and this is kind of the classic shape that I do. And it's actually, it's actually relatively simple to do. And, and I am kind of surprised <laughs> Easy for you to say. (laughs) There are caveats to that simple, of course. And one of the caveats is when you cut all the glass, uh, there's about 40 pieces involved in the piece that you're looking at right now. And Mm -hmm. that piece, those 40 pieces, uh, they're cut on a radius, which is not that altogether easy to do. Uh, But you can't even have one mistake because then the colors will be out of order. So you have to be able to cut 40 pieces in a row and, and not miss any one of those. Now, for me, that's a relatively easy thing to do. But then again, I've been cutting glass for literally 45 years. So Great. I'm pretty good at it. Yeah, don't uh, try that at, at home, folks. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's something that, that it's... it's Getting a little feedback. Okay. Getting a little feedback there, Tom. Let's see what's going. On. Okay, okay, we're back. We can hear you now. Oh, you can hear me now. Yeah. Okay. I I can barely hear you now, of course, but that's okay. Uh, as long as you can hear me. So these yeah. pieces are are um. Like I say, they're actually relatively simple. It's get a sheet of glass cut pieces and glue them together and and yeah you're right there's virtually nobody else that does this kind of work there are a few people that do cut glass and glue it together uh but it's it's uh, they make more i i think i'd call them um massive pieces they're they're lots of pieces of glass and they're assembled in a rather um, uh, just big way. So the piece has a tremendous amount of volume to it and a tremendous amount of weight to it. Uh, I have always tried to make these pieces so that they are actually very light looking. And, and part of my, um, my theory of making it light in appearance is to make the volume of the piece very large for the amount of glass that you're using. And, uh, and I've done a pretty good job of that in that this piece is uh, 
24 inches tall, 24 inches wide, and only weighs about 25 pounds. So most of the other people that work in this kind of glue together fashion uh, tend to have a piece, if it's 24 by 24 by 10 inches, it weighs 100 pounds or so. so How do you uh, get the structure? I mean, you know, these, I, I have you come into the gallery sometime and you just whip those right off the pedestal and move them around. We're a little bit, you know, we, we've got a little bit concern when we're doing that, but I know that you keep telling us over and over, don't worry, they're very... You know, they're very substantial. You don't have to be so concerned. How do you get that structure so that it's so perfect? Well, the, the, so the, there's two issues there. The, the perfect part is just like the, how do you make a piece of art perfect? Uh, trust me, it's never perfect. <laughs> it's perfect. Or it may look like it's absolutely symmetrical, but it's not. And, and a, a portion of that, which is, typical in this particular sculpture uh, is that literally when this is assembled, I have a circle on a piece of paper that is drawn. And other than that circle, it is eyeballed when I put it together. Wow. So, uh, so it's e effectively every piece that I lay down, I kind of look at it and look at all the other pieces and make sure that they all look essentially the same. They're, they all have the same amount of gap and everything. And what happens is, since it isn't possible to cut the glass perfectly every time, and since it isn't possible to assemble perfectly every time, uh, the, you have to kind of eyeball it to make it look like it is perfectly symmetrical, even though it is. So that's part of it. And then part of it is an engineering thing. So if you understand glass and you understand that glass is very strong in the vertical if you take a sheet of glass, let's and I use quarter inch glass mostly, if you take a sheet of glass and stand it on edge, it's extremely strong. If you lay it down flat and you bend the glass, it'll break. So these sculptures are the same way. They are standing up. So literally, I can take this sculpture, and, mm -hmm. and I'm not that I'm going to do this, but I can take this sculpture, I can put it on the ground and I can stand in the middle of it and it will withstand my entire weight. That's uh, incredible. Sideways though, that'll, that'll be a problem. So um, let me show you one other quick thing here. My battery is kind of starting to go. Here's another thing that I've started doing. These panels are di mostly dichroic glass and they can either be standalone like this one is on a stand or they can be put onto a, onto a wall, or you can see the one up above there. Um, uh, and they could be uh, vertical or horizontal on a wall. Uh, lots of different potentials for that particular type of sculpture. Uh, and they are um, fused glass made with a lot of dichroic glass. And the reason I use so much dichroic glass is because I have my own chambers for making the dichroic glass. Uh, I was so going to say, otherwise, it's quite costly. Uh, I mean, dichroic. It's really cool stuff. So I, you know, I'm not sure what else to say. <laughs> I love those. They have a very um, modern, almost um, mid-century uh, modern kind of a style. Mm -hmm. I love the squares. It's so the really, you know, different from what you're doing here in the shapes. They have a completely different feel. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Um, is that and, what you were uh, alluding to earlier, that that's what you've been working on as something different? Hang on for one second. Let me uh, okay. connect the battery up. Okay. And well, folks, wow. These are, I mean, I'm overwhelmed. And now I cannot wait till our gallery reopens so that I can see some of these in person. Yeah, uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm anxious to do that. And let me show you one more piece that... Uh, and this kind of this kind of heads back to what you were talking about, um, so to speak, a legacy or or the 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 time and and what is important in this time. And so this piece is actually two separate pieces of glass. There's you can see there's a a, a purple or violet disc that is in front, and that disc is uh, about four inches thick at the bottom. You can see it here at the bottom. 
and then behind it, there is a cast glass face. Uh, and if you look very carefully in the, in the purple, let me see if I can get it to where you can actually see it. You can just barely see there's a little veil of uh, color of kind of white yes. in the purple there. And the whole concept here of this piece is it's called behind the veil. And so this veil is covering the way a veil would if you lived in an Eastern country and you and the woman and you had to cover your face and everything, that's the concept here. And then the face behind it is something that is, you'd have to see it in person to really be able to tell. And I'll get a little closer here, but you can see there are kind of, there's cracks in it. There are things going on inside. And part of my thing is what goes along with the, um, with the name of the sculpture is literally the questions of how many cracks do you have in your facade? And things like, what color are you inside? And it, what is your third eye seeing? And things mm -hmm. like that. And, and so this is something that I think will, um, will kind of remind people, maybe in another 20 years, if we don't hate each other by that time, <laughs> and hopefully we won't, but this piece may remind people of that time when being behind the veil was something that, that some people had to be. They had no choice but to be behind the veil. And, and they may have been perfect behind the veil, or they may have been somebody who is very flawed, but if you're blocked by what might be a political veil or a religious veil, you can't tell anything about that person or very little about that person. So something to something just for people to kind of think about. I love that. That's really profound. Um, there's so many different ideas that come to mind when you're bringing those things up, which I think kind of intersects with what you're talking about, how you create your art. You know, you keep alluding to it's not perfect. It's not perfect. Well, yeah. What what is perfect? And the thing is, is that you know you're you are putting each one of these pieces together as an individual work of art. These are all originally done by your artistry and by your hand. And in that in that um, sense, we feel that it's perfect when it comes to the gallery because you know we don't see any of that. Um, well, we see no. And, and I'm glad you don't. <laughs> 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 Amazing. I'm going to bring myself back up here. Wow. That's, that's a, a absolutely amazing piece. I love Thank that. You. Let me see Thank you. come back. So anything that you'd like to share with folks um, about what's coming up or, I mean, that was such a profound thought that you just shared with us through your art and through showing us um, what you're thinking about anything that you'd like to uh, just share with the folks about this time and, Leave us with a few words of your own wisdom. Well, um, all things will pass. I mean, certainly that is, you know, that's something that we all need to think about. And, and of course, uh, maybe the time spent uh, alone is a good time to reflect on those things that in a busy world we don't reflect on enough. Um, so it's, I mean, like they say, you know, we're all in this together and, uh, but it will end. And, and when it ends, it's just kind of, are we going to continue to, what I hope is that we continue to feel uh, as if our neighbors and the, and the people who we have spent time with are, are all as worthy as everybody else is. And, mm -hmm. and we can keep in touch and keep things uh keep things moving i love it what what, a, what beautiful words thank well, you thank so you. much for being on the show today and of course when this all passes we're going to have our our big 25 year anniversary yep. celebration here at the gallery which you yep. definitely will have to be here so folks can come out and if they haven't met you in person this is a good first intro but then they'll be able to meet you and uh, see what you 
all these new great pieces as they come in. So there, there thank we go. you. That's and, wonderful. And I will definitely be there. Okay. Well, thank you again for sharing your work with us. It was a really, what a treat is what I'd say is I, I have didn't even, I've never been to your studio. So it's my first, my first tour. Yeah. Well, it's, it's definitely something that you should do and uh, and certainly anybody who is listening who is interested in coming to the studio all they have to do is get a hold of me schedule a time and i'm more than happy to give people you know the the full here's what i do and here's how it's all done that's and, great uh, and maybe that will inspire them to do something that is in the glass world that's wonderful okay folks you heard it from the man Tom, he's going to be opening up his studio. Once this all passes, maybe we'll get a group of us. And we can all go out and, and see it in person. But thank you so much again. I really appreciate you being on the show, and um, we'll see you soon. Of course. And thank you, Ruth Ann. This is great. And, uh, and keep it going. Okay, we will. Spread the art, spread the love. You got it. Okay, we'll thank see you. you again. Okay, bye. Bye bye. Well, folks, this has been our Monday, week five, Art of the City TV. I hope you enjoyed the show today. I know I'm, I'm just feeling re-energized with all of that. And I think one of the things Tom said was, you know, this time to reflect and think about the things that are really important. I know our families are, are top on all of our lists. And then, you know, the things that we surround ourselves with, obviously art, music, culture, all of those things are really the things that are going to continue to move forward. Even, you know, someday when we aren't here, those will continue to be pushed forward. So I appreciate all you folks watching because I know you are as just as passionate about the arts as I am. And please share this channel with folks. Um, again, if you have somebody that would like to be on the show, we would love to have them. Let's just encourage all those talents around us to keep pouring out and um, to bring that beauty into the world. So tomorrow, uh, I'm sorry, Wednesday, we're gonna have Gabe Leonard on the show. Gabe is an artist that we had at our Seaport uh, Village Gallery. And he's gonna take us into Westworld where he does these really wonderful Western pieces and a little bit of a pulp fiction. And then we have a mixologist coming on the show as well, who's going to show us how to mix a nice bourbon drink. So should be a really fun show. And that is Drinks by Dutch, if you want to take a look and, uh, at his web page. And so, you know, let's just continue to enjoy this time. I know that uh, it threw us all off a little bit, especially the Easter thing. But now um, we've got this opportunity to embrace the art, share the art. So please do that. Be well. I'll see you Wednesday, 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time right here. Art of the City TV. Be blessed.